hello, Mina. Hello, Adele. It's so good hello. to see you together. Um, same haircut, same style, same <laughs> ideas, same, I don't know, energy. I feel there is a good connection here. Um, Adela, we know each other from Florence. You did that great performance in our villa when the opening, it was 2015. And since then we lost each other because we were too busy. I met Mina to um, Gabriela uh, De Negri, who has made that beautiful catalog of transfashional. And, uh, and I, I didn't know that you had so much energy because it doesn't matter to you, Mina, if you work on a collection, a performance, uh, a book, an installation at home or whatever. So there is that kind of energy that you have both that is fascinating. So Adele, please tell a little bit more in what phase of your life in that performance activity you are. Oh, always, always uh, performing the everyday life of fashion. Um, for me, I think what keeps me in fashion is I don't quite understand it so i keep questioning and testing and i'm really curious about how it affects us socially and emotionally um, and the kinds of yeah i guess patterns you could call them that do come about but in terms of relationships and interaction and yeah i mean i think um fashion is something that we all participate in every day and I want to know, yeah, how it just impacts our lives um, and how it gets into our brains. Hmm. I mean, I, I guess mm. you have the same questions on whether it is a collection, whether it's um, uh, an installation, it's about the female body or the body. And uh, that question mm. remains in your, as a red thread uh, in, your, in your collections. Yes. So please, a little bit your evolution in your work. Oh, the evolution of my work. Oh, my God. Uh, in, a, in a quick way. I first have to say the same thing as Adele, that uh, I really don't get fashion. It frustrates me and it confuses me and it makes me extremely happy at times, but I don't get it. So I'm also really much just exploring and, and, and experimenting around the questions that I have around the whole system. But uh, it, it, my, my project with the body started uh, that I just found this sociologist called Mary Douglas who said something about we all have two different bodies, an intimate body, which is the one we actually have and we maybe don't show to too many people. Then we have the social body that is the one we in different ways present our body to the world, like through clothing or working out or corsets or whatever it might be. And I took her words and I just out of context and made them mine. So mm. it started with working with the clashes of what we, what we have and what we want to have and what other people are expecting from us. And this is a, a theme all the time. But I'm also very interested in the whole system around production and consumption, which I think is uh, just crazy. Uh, so actually a year ago, before uh, COVID-19, I started working on uh, a project called Under Pressure, where I'm squeezing stuff in through. It's a press machine. It's very known in the Nordic countries, but through mm. the months I work, no one knows it in the world. It's called a mango, but it's like you roll stuff in, in Under Pressure and crease. I make creases. And so, yeah, I work with that pressure that we're all under and the pressure is unfortunately just getting worse. <laughs> How we handle with pressure, with the pressure, um, Adele? In oh, yeah. Um, I think there have been elements of pressure. We did a pretty intensive um, stage four lockdown, but it's also been incredible, the sense of community and how, I guess, the pressure has brought people together, almost like, Mina, I know you're, um, I was looking at your work with the creases and folds. It's almost like, yeah, kind of moving in and out of those dark and light spaces. Yeah. But I feel like we're doing it more together. Mm. So there is a positive side of all this misery. Mina, mm. can you uh, can you feel that you're further away of the fashion system again, uh, further out of it, or or do yes. you want to go in and make it and and make a statement? 
I've been going back and forth. Uh, I started outside of it. I actually never went to fashion school. I went to like clothes making and then textile art school. So I've never done the fashion thing. I don't, that's why I'm really confused because I've never learned how to do it. So, so I've been trying to be in the system and f fight from within. And I think I still do, but I've been taking a, ba a step back because I try to do the production and, and everything. And it's too stressful with like uh, making collections, all the money, all the time, all the logistics around it. So now I'm again working more organically. Um, so I think again, I'm more outside of the system. I'm not sure I was ever really in it. <laughs> I'm, mm. not, I'm not sure, <laughs> no. to be honest. No. But it's uh, decisions to take, I think, for designers. They are taking decisions like, no, this is not for me. I'll do it on my own, on my mm. own rhythm and on my own identity and personality and integrity. And I think that's the most important thing that is going to happen. As an artist, do you have the same decisions to take, Adela, or are you more free? Uh, well, no, I think there is a system within, um, you know, being an artist as well. But I was just thinking, Mina, just quickly about what you said about the fashion system, like being out of it. I don't know, like I personally feel like that's kind of hard to do because I guess I'm someone who thinks that we're all you know, if we have clothes on, the, on our bodies, we are playing a role you in, know in the system. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Fashion. Um, but I guess, like, yeah, and being an artist as well, and I think I'm trying to, uh, well, be part of it, but also try to step out of it. I feel like it's a system that maybe we're all in, and it can actually be hard to escape or step out of to reflect on. Um, sorry, Linda, I'm not, I don't know if I'm answering your question. It was more about being an artist. Um, but for me, I guess these kinds of things, these, the trying to understand fashion is probably my <laughs> primary question at the moment. <laughs> um, but I do feel that, yeah, within art, there is, there's, there's also, I think, um, a, a system within, within making work yeah you have the art gallery you have the art fairs you have the art uh festival business uh, yeah mm. there is a system there is a system yeah but i think you can easily avoid it than uh, when you're a fashion designer i think what mina does is extremely important because you see mm. i do what i do and and i do it like my way and you like it or you don't like it and that's the kind of position that more and more young designers are taking so i think there is a new movement that is going to happen and we are part of that i think i'm very happy that finally we can talk again to each other without talking about our press agent and our how we have an interview in vogue or not it doesn't matter oh. hmm. yeah like i think also I mean, yeah, I, I'm feeling more of a sense of maybe hierarchies and things like that being potentially flattened. Is it? <laughs> and I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm hoping for, I'm hoping for that <laughs> as well. I'm hoping for that too. Yeah, because if I can, I, I've been, in, I've, I've had a really great um, autumn actually in this horrible situation because I've been part of a takeover, like, you know, artist takeover uh, with just women and non-binary mm. artists taking over a huge space in the posh central area of Stockholm because so many so many places are empty because everybody is going bankrupt and people have to move out and and we would never be able to be on this address but this amazing woman called Paula Bjerringer uh, made it all happen uh, mm. and I would say what you see there is that every this crisis is, is hitting on all levels. So also the ones with the posh places in the posh areas are sort of going bankrupt. And then we can sneak mm. in there and do something else. And I think it's at least something is happening to the expected hierarchies. And I hope that we continue for sure. Mm. 
I, I know because like I also wonder if that's it's got something to do with communicating online as well like I feel like I'm you know here we are and we're in a virtual environment um, but in some ways I think I, I just wonder how that shifts that idea of hierarchy as well if it is hmm. you know for sort of like avatars you know yeah, <laughs> I don't know if but just kind of, I feel like this virtual environment's also created lots of opportunities uh, to connect. Um, and I think there was a, a question from Linda that was a bit about. Oh, let me let me go back through my notes. <laughs> oh, maybe Linda's got it there. <laughs> uh, but I think it was about um, if we can connect. Mm. Um, or interact more often with cultures and um, yeah I think key word there was yeah just that that connect that word connection um, and if it is locally or globally um, I think it needs to be both I think this is amazing mm. we, we sit in different parts of the world and have this discussion when we have very much the same thoughts uh, but I also think the like the takeover I was part of like locally you have to find each other and build like strong joint forces and help each other out and find spots to take over to get stronger together so locally you can do that because i think that human interaction is so so important i mean mm -hmm. as much as we can have a human interaction at all at this time and then also the global um to do these sort of things to to feel connected to each other uh, more from more far away yeah I, I i guess like from that that idea as well i was just thinking what happens locally if you can't find your tribe like mm. if you are someone who you know might not find people locally that share similar i don't know That's ideas or, <laughs> so I thought yeah of course that must be yeah tough so uh, yeah I was just thinking about like these, how I guess online and virtual spaces can kind of bring people together or bring you closer to people who might be more. Yeah, like but you. that's the great thing. Yeah. We have the options. I mean, that's, mm. that's perfect because we are all different and we also need different things. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think more and more the designer is part of an artistic community, the photographer, the film maker, the, 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 the performing uh, that you both, both do is coming more and more into the fashion field as well. Everybody is now performing, dancing on, on, on TikTok and whatever and doing films and instead of, of fashion shows. So is, do you think it's a movement that will go on that the performance is going to take over the fashion show? I hope so, because I think a fashion show is is wasted if you don't do some sort of performing act. I mean, a performing act can be so much, but at least to stage, to invite people into your brain and your universe, because the clothes, as soon as they leave the catwalk or whatever you do, they're going to be taken out of context in PR, in magazines, people wearing them in ways you never maybe intended, or which is also great. But this is the this is the time you have to show people what you were actually thinking, and you can say something, and you can uh, yeah, you can really start a discussion or just fantasy among people. I just think it's a way to just send looks like choo choo choo. <laughs> I don't know. It says it doesn't say that much to me. Adela, I I quite like. Uh, as you know, Linda, uh, participatory performance where the audience uh, are involved or immersed in the show and they feel something themselves and it might be through an encounter with a performer or it might be through an encounter with another audience member. But yeah, I think fashion for me is a feeling. It's something that we feel rather than see and yeah, I'm always interested to try and bring that to life. I love that about your work, like the feeling and that it's about something we're always in and like mm. how does it affect us? I think it's, yeah, it's very interesting. I um, 
Speaking of the the old the catwalk as well and performance, I we have a main shopping street in Melbourne and um, during the fashion festival I took a whole pile of buckets down to that shopping street and we put buckets down either side of the road and the people doing their shopping were walking up and down like it was a catwalk um, and then the people sitting on the buckets were just clapping and cheering oh, wow. but it was the idea <laughs> of... <laughs> It was so, so, <laughs> so fun. Uh, yeah, but it was the idea of looking to ourselves and our community to inform what we wear. Like, you know, we might um, in Australia might look to Europe, <laughs> but um, I guess I was saying that, hey, you know, I think it's what what we what we wear as a community that 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 informs, um, yeah, what what what's on our bodies. That makes sense. Yeah, so I guess yeah. bringing it local. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think And that's every really day. Funny. Because and there guess... is so much force in that instead of always thinking that fashion, the, the, the fashion center is somewhere else or that to be real or to do something, you have to do it in Paris or you have to connect to people in Paris yeah. or in London. I mean, it's like so much happening. If you just start digging and if you start connecting, you can do so much locally, I think. And then you can make it uh, to the rest of the world digitally. So, mm. I mean, do, do you do you feel that in your cities? I mean, Linda, where where you are, I mean, could be considered a bit of a fashion hotspot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how how is that for you? I mean, where do you look? Are you are you looking locally or globally or the twenty third of February my life changed because my husband said I'm thinking that it's not a good idea if we go to Paris for the fashion show. I had all the invitations, mm -hmm. I had all I was in the LVMH jewelry for young designers. So I had a nice program. And he said, mm -hmm. mm -mm, not uh, this time, my girl. I mean uh, COVID is there and we can't travel. And I unpacked my, my clothes and I put them back in my wardrobe and I, we went for a walk and we went for a nice dinner. And since then, I'm different. I don't care to be there on the first or the second row mm. of a fashion show. I don't need all those people and queuing and waiting and, and see that, that money that is useless. And, and so I started writing the new fashion containers in, in March of April. And that's exactly what you were saying now. It's connecting locally and make it globally with the digital. So I'm happy uh, with, with life today, with you talking about the future and, and mm. finding new patterns. I feel very in, in tone with myself. That's so mm. nice. <laughs> yeah, that is really nice. Yeah, wow. I mean, at first for you, I mean, you had your suitcase packed, you were going to Paris. It must Was that hard for you to resi the resist the, the desire? Because I think there is something about fashion that kind of, you know, it's hot, it's new, like, does it kind of bring about a desire? Was it hard for you to um, unpack your clothes and stay in Florence? It was hard because I, I worked hard to have all those invitations, you know, the Balenciaga invitation and, uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. and you see, so, and then I said, I make it, I made a choice. I said, no, I can maybe, and it was five minutes, maybe difficult. And then we went for a nice dinner. I took a glass of wine. And before going to bed, I said, my husband is right. I never, I, I'm not always um, following his advice. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but this time he was right. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I no, think he it, really it, was it's right. It's a joke. But uh, uh, since then, uh, my life changed and I started writing that document. Yeah, it's true. And it's interesting how quickly you can, you can actually step out of something. Because I guess for you, uh, you just... You're just part of it, you know, going to the shows, going to the show, and it's something you just do and you don't mm -hmm. have time to reflect and it's nice and it, it is like uh, a really, really cool happenings and you meet cool people, but it's also quite just like 
as I see, it's stressful, a lot of money going and like just more about showing your face so people know you were there and then you yeah. can just sort of run to the next. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting to hear from you how quickly that can just like poop. And even poop. now the people are showing stuff digitally and you're like, blah, blah, I'm not very interested. It's, it's really, really, really interesting because I think that's a lot of people have a hard time letting go of the stuff that used to be and how it is now. And of course, uh, this situation we're in, it contains a certain, a lot of sorrow and a lot of grief, like grieving stuff. But you can also, like you did, be like, oh, all of a sudden you see stuff in a different way and you can try to take that somewhere as you're really doing with this. Mm, yes, it, it, I was, it was, not so difficult and especially the days after we went for a walk with beautiful weather i went to young mm. people who made music in uh, the academy of music here in florence that's fantastic perfect perfect <laughs> yeah Adela, what think, is I your think... next performance ah oh, well just following on from what you're saying linda just like i guess for me being in lockdown it was a really good time just to step back and reflect and I've been doing some writing. I'm actually working on a children's kind of graphic novel about fashion at the moment. So it's kind of, I'm just trying to distill some of the more complex ideas into really simple terms. Um, but I am, I mean, I'm working on another performance for next year, but yeah, it's just been really nice to sit and reflect and be like, okay, well, is fashion important to me? What are my priorities? Um, I'm like, yes, fashion's important to me. I think it, I think it's so important how it affects every individual, um, you know, and how we how we perceive ourselves. It's massive. I think fashion's a massive thing that plays a huge role in our lives, and I feel like my work is not done there yet. <laughs> no, it's not. Luckily I'm for sure. us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Are you going to do a project together? Oh, that could be something. Let's do let's oh that. Oh my God, yeah. We could maybe, this... yeah. It's interesting. It's really interesting. Can we do that both locally, but then it's sort of emerged? Oh, we talk about that. Oh, wow. we can always, yeah, nice. I think there's definitely some crossovers. Is this, yeah, was this a hidden agenda, Linda? Is yeah. this like a secret <laughs> speed date? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's nice though. It's nice. I mean, I, I, you both, you you have so much in common. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, we need you guys. We need your energy <laughs> because really. The, no, we need we you have, though, Linda. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. But we need, the, the world needs your energy and your, your integrity. So keep on doing those uh, performances and those... Uh, whatever it might be, because that's the openness in your mind. You don't have a precise goal. You say, whatever it is, it has to be yeah. like that. So you have that inner feeling that you are doing the right thing, I guess. Mm. Mm. Last Good. word, Adela. Oh, really? A last word? Oh my gosh, I need time to think about this. Um, wait, let me just quickly look at all my notes. There are so many things I wanted to say. You wanted to say. I have another question. Yeah. What about other cultures? Are we enough in are we enough engaged with other cultures? That's also a point of me. No, eh? We're in our little home, in our little country, in our little neighborhood. But yeah, we're not there are engaged. Yeah, there's so um, many. Mina, again, we're going yeah. to we're going to hierarchies. I mean, the world yeah. as it has evolved through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years in ways like who's who's up here and who's down here and who who is sort of taking advantage of who. And I mean, mm. it's such a it's such a horrible mess, to be honest, and it's nothing we can just do like this. So I think engaging in different cultures, listening to each other and doing collabs, not uh, now I think it's like some countries, uh, like if we would say first world countries, which, yeah, like think they're collaborating or something with another country, but they sort of feel they have the overtake over that culture. I don't know, but I think it's extremely important that we would start uh, 
to talk to, just talk to more to each other and listen to each other yeah. and see yeah. what could come out yeah. of that. And decolonize that we think from Europe, we are the, yeah, we yeah. the, the knowledge so, from, yeah. from fashion and it's absolutely not, so. Yes. Well, I have exactly this whole, sort of what you've been going through, Linda, that we start to see, looking at uh, how we used to live our lives. Uh, and it's a lot from there, we really need to get back, like hugging, meeting the loved ones. Uh, all of that is, I think that's the really hor horrible part of this. But I, I'm hoping that people could just have a little bit of a wake up instead of being like, oh, I can't do this anymore. Be like, but but was how important was that to me? Did it make sense? Uh, just trying to uh, uh, maybe realize like a lot of stuff were just facades and just stuff we did to keep up appearances and just skip all that. And, and uh, that's my biggest hope, I think. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, my biggest hope is a feeling of empowerment and awareness and, mm -hmm. that, and transparency. Yeah. Beautiful. What's yours, Linda? Mine is um, connecting. Mm. Connecting I, with as many people as possible. And bring them together, like now. I mean, so you made my day. <laughs> it was really nice. Thank you. Thank time. you, Mina. Thank you, Adela. It was wonderful to have you both. And you I so hope much. to see you soon, uh, hugging real. Yeah, yeah, I hope that'd so be great. Too. Otherwise, let's meet digitally again soon. Perfect. <laughs> okay. And let's write, and and maybe we make a book out of it. Definitely. Fabulous. Okay. Yeah. Take care, both of you. Take care. Thanks, Linda. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.